Okay, welcome to today's product review. This is the review of the foreground Polish rural dwelling. I just finished over the weekend. Uh, found some time to just tack it in a, a block. It took about two hours. Now, before I go much further, I want to point out, you'll see the first part of the, the product num ID is number. It's either 15 or 28, depending on the scale. But it's either followed with just a hyphen, a P, or an S. Now, in both cases, uh, or in those cases, they're actually describing the components that are within that particular model kit. And the reason I think that's important is that the comments I'm going to make here, I think, uh, or my opinions, have been framed, I think, specifically toward that S, the uh, 28S. And if you look at their actual packaging, the 28 just mentions that the kit has no prepainted parts, no add-on doors or window frames or anything like that. It's just pretty much a MDF laser cut kit. Nothing fancy, no paints, no details. That's the regular 28 or 15. If it's followed by a P, then it's going to have some prepainted parts, but there's not really going to be internal walls, internal details, or add-on details. If it's followed by an S, however, it has all the external details, everything's pre-painted, and it comes with a good interior. So, since this was a 28S kit, I'm looking at this as, uh, my, my opinions here are going to be geared toward 28S. And I've heard a lot about the, the foreground kits, maybe not having a lot of details, or there have been some quality, not quality, but um, I guess they don't have the the look and feel that you kind of want. And I have a feeling that might be related to the fact that it was maybe a 28P versus a 28S. So I built this kit. I love it. It only took about two hours. And I can't wait to build my next 28S kit. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Uh, there's quite a few. I've got a lot of ideas uh, for a Mordheim kind of terrain. That's kind of what I'm thinking about doing here. So my opinion based on this kit of the 28S is very favorable. Uh, I don't know if I want to try one of their 28P kits for a while because I'm, I'm looking for some of those details and pre-painted, even the exterior details. But I'm sure there's going to be some 28P kits that I'll probably want to do as well. So let's get on with the review and see what my how my first impressions kind of compared with my actual impression now that I've actually done the work. I want to start with the... Uh, obvious the thatched roof that was the thing that drew me to the kit in the first place and yeah it's teddy bear fur just like uh, people have said but it actually does give a pretty good impression of thatch now as i went through the kit i had i, had, I was initially thinking i was going to use a dull coat to kind of dull it up a bit and bring it down there's still a little bit of sheen on it but there really isn't that much it's, it's when it's in a bright light you can see a little bit of sheen but overall it does a very good job with the recommended 50 50 white glue water mix that they they have in their instructions now the one thing i did differently from their instructions is they they recommend using an actual toothbrush to comb the fibers down and lay them flat i was a little worried that that might actually pull some of the fibers out so instead of using a toothbrush or something stiff like that, I went ahead and used a regular one and a half inch paintbrush with just synthetic bristles. It's stiff enough to put the glue down, but fine enough that it wouldn't actually grab any of the fibers and pull them out. So, you know, just a junky old clean brush to put the 50-50 mixture of white glue water down. And I think the results came out real well. Now the one thing I'm going to do next time though is I'm going to be a little more careful when I do the roof peak because what I noticed is that you can actually see some of the backing material through here so if you're not careful on how you uh, lay your fibers uh, front and back you may actually expose some of that peak now you'll see down here the fibers overlay it pretty well so it's not easily seen but some spots it's obvious now of course from a perspective of you looking at it like a scale model yeah that's a drawback when you're sitting on a table and you're actually fighting a battle around it I don't think that actually draw, detracts at all from the the actual experience on the table so I'm I'm not really worried about that particular part I'll think of it as more like a learning curve thing so 
I like the way they approach the thatch drift. It works really well for this kind of terrain, and I think it's a, a good compromise between uh, believability and durability. Now, there are some things I noticed in the kit uh, going through that you know, I hadn't really paid attention to. I couldn't tell in the instructions, so I'm going to point a couple of those things out because uh, they may not be easy to see. Now, again, my background, I have done a lot of model building and uh, railroading, model railroading. And so I've done a lot of scale structures. So there's some of this stuff I knew already. And that's why I was able to recognize some of this. If you'll notice on the door frame, you'll notice there's actually is a top and a bottom. It's not easy to tell in the kit instructions, but the bottom here, you'll see there's a butt joint. The, the lower board lays across the entire sill and then the risers come down straight flush with the board. Now up here at the top corner, there's a 45 degree angle miter joint. That's supposed to be top. So make sure when you, you do put the kit together to go ahead and put it together like that. It'll fit in the other way, but um, again, with my background, I wanted to be a little more careful. The windows are built the same way. And so there is also mitering on top. So very good details. Very impressed to see that kind of care taken in the actual cutting, laser cutting. Now one of the things that I also had to do, I didn't know, I couldn't tell from looking at the kit how far back those mullins had to sit in the window frame itself. So I went ahead and made them flush with the back wall. So it is inset pretty well, you'll see. I think it looks good. I, I don't think it's wrong. It could maybe be set in toward the front a little bit further, but uh, just make sure it's not flush with the very front. That's one thing you don't want. You want it centered or a little further back. Now, the front door is designed to swing open. It's just a neat little feature. You don't have to actually... Uh, you can actually glue it if you really want. But one thing I was impressed by is that door handle. The door handle itself is a piece of the MDF that was laser cut and it slides into a notch. Because it's been scorched by the laser, it actually has a pretty good um, wrought iron look to it. And it doesn't need to be painted or touched up at all. It blends in real well. I was very impressed with that. So, a good detail for the... And then, of course, in the interior, there's a door that stands open. And it, too, has the, the same door handle. And if you take a close look at that door handle... You can see it actually is separated from the hand from the door itself is actually a curved handle. I think it's a very nice detail uh, from a again a modeling perspective. So, so inside you have a chimney and uh, oven with uh, multiple steps. It's actually created through several layers of MDF to make the hollow and the uh, bulk of the chimney along with the floor. Again, those are all pre-painted detail parts. Now, if you remember back in the in my video, I was talking about the scorch marks here along the windows. Well, I was thinking, when I was looking at the parts, that those were actually the outer walls. But they're actually the inner walls. So since you're not going to see them, it, I don't think it really matters too much that those scorch marks are a little bit off. The one of, in the upper corner here is going straight out 90 degrees, which is a little off. It should actually be uh, a lot less noticeable. The one below it is dropping straight down, which is good. But again, interior walls probably not going to have those in there. So I didn't bother covering them up because they're not really going to be visible uh, on a tabletop much. Uh, I did leave, I didn't do anything interior uh, except put together as instructed by the kit. So all those cracks are molded in there or cut in there by the manufacturer. So it's a, some good details. Okay. Now on the outside, well, I, one of the things, I did, I did not glue the porch on for two reasons. One is I was a little worried that it might get knocked off because it does stick out a good distance from the kit, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, but it also makes it possible for me to leave it off if I want or put it on a different, potentially different configuration, maybe I'll put it on the end, uh, just whatever I might want in the scenario or terrain on the table. But the other reason was I wanted to show off some of the detail parts here. 
The first one is in each of these uh, openings here, these, these are actually designed to pop out. So you can pop these out if you want and replace them with like this one here. It's a small sh shaped exactly the same piece. Looks like a little bit of uh, lath board that the plaster is peeled from. And it sets in real nice. It has some good texture and does sit a little below the surface of the plaster so it looks like it's got some depth. Or what you can do alternatively, as I did here, is you can glue it in at an angle so it looks like it's kind of popping off the side. So gives you a little bit of wear and of course you can replace as many or as few of them as you want to come up with what you're looking for. Very, very pleased with that particular aspect. Now, the one thing that the kit did not really explain very well was the placement of the chimney. This, if you look at the actual kit itself, I've got it kind of a little bit off center. And I tried to line it up with where the, the actual uh, chimney or the, the hearth was. So if I line the building up, it's pretty well centered. But I did not know how far down from the roof to slide it. It doesn't really show that in the instructions. Now, I did know, for, again, from uh, previous building experiences, that the top of the chimney, the top of the flat, not the peak, but the flat part of the chimney, should be at or above the peak of the roof. So I used that kind of as my gauge and set it, glued it down. And I probably should have raised it a bit because the thatch did add a little bit of space to it. But all in all, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I probably would have raised it. I'll raise it on the next one so it's a little bit higher. So that's a little piece of detail work that uh, I had to play around with. Now, one of the things that I really enjoyed doing was actually playing around with these, these shutters. Because there's nothing to fix them onto the... You know, there's no hardware, if you will. You don't, there's no hinges, no uh, points of attachment. You glue them in and place them at the angle you want and it's just glue holding on so I kind of played around picked up some damaged ones uh, and some good ones so they're not all damaged because again I'm not, I'm not looking for a dilapidated structure my Mordheim warband isn't going to be living in a, a hole I mean, so I think I got a pretty good yeah I think that looks that actually looks good to my, to my eye what I had in my mind was a slightly uh, run-down, age structure that my warband was able to move into. So that was very, very good, um, you know, having the options. Because some of the shutters are in half, have a lot more holes in them. And you actually get ten shutters. You only need six on the kit. So you actually have four extras. So that does two things. One is it gives you more options for detailing. And secondly, if they do break off, you've got spares. And from a war gamer's perspective, I think that's a big benefit. Because I do like I do like to have my kits repaired if they do break down. Now, one thing I'm really impressed with this kit on is its durability. The walls are built double thickness. So there's an inside wall and outside wall, and they're sandwiched together. They're interlocking at top and bottom, several points, and that is really durable. Very, very strong. So I don't have any doubt this is going to hold up very, very well. I know some of the kits uh, my friends have had, they've had some trouble with some of the, the smaller pieces breaking off, but I doubt this one's going to have much damage at all. So Now the interior door, that is glued in place. That's designed that way. Uh, that's the way the kit instructs you to build it. So this is the Polish Rural Dwelling, and it's in all its glory. And... And show off well, the one more detail part, and this is the geometric pattern on those the uh, A-frame on the end. It looks stunning, and it really does come out well. What I really liked is the very, very subtle scorching along the bottom. It that's just natural weathering. I had to do no weathering to this at all to make it look as good as it does. I was very, very impressed. Like I said, I cannot wait to make my next kit, and so I definitely would strongly suggest that you give one of these a try. And I was. Uh, about 35 bucks US uh, when I bought it. So, uh, you know, it's honestly, like I said in my other video, it's very much on par with other building kits I've had. And actually a little cheaper than some 
uh, of similar size and complexity. So kudos to Foreground for this particular kit. Uh, really, I think this kit sold me on their products. So I'm going to try their next, probably, I think I might go with one of their Russian dwellings or maybe one of their uh, Danish uh, Anglo or Anglo-Saxon dwellings. Again, thatched roofs, I kind of like that. It fits in well with the Mordheim perspective. There are a few Mordheim-style buildings with the uh, more German um, uh, plaster and arches. And the I don't quite know what the architecture is called, but you know it has a lot of these uh, beams between the uh, between the plaster, going in different uh, Gothic-type arches and what have you. And I do want to try some of those because again, I want I really want my Mordheim terrain to, to kind of flesh out a little bit more. So that's my product review for the foreground Polish rural dwelling. Again, very pleased with it. it they sold me on their 28S line of kits and I'm looking forward to building my next one. And I hope it gave you some ideas or understanding of uh, how the kit is created, how it's built, and let me know what you think. Uh, if you've had similar experiences or even different ones, go ahead and comment below and let me know what you what your experiences are. Other than that, share, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next product review. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.